Okay, so in last class we have discussed uh, about the general idea and uh, classification of carbohydrate, protein, and fats. So today I will discuss about the digestion and metabolism of carbohydrate for ruminant as well as non-ruminant species. So how the feed and whatever the feed offered to the animals of different composition, how they can digest and after digestion, how metabolism takes place in the body of the ruminant and non-ruminant. So today I will discuss about the carbohydrate metabolism. And in coming class, I will discuss about the fat metabolism and protein metabolism separately. So digestion, you know about, about the digestion. Digestion starts from the mouth itself. And uh, how monogastic animal digest and absorb the nutrient from the different kind of the feeds, what they consume. So first of all, the digestion takes place in mouth and that is known as library digestion. So what happens in library digestion, when the animals consume the food and feed ingredients, first they chew it. And so this process is known as the mastication of the feed. So they masticate first during mastication pro, uh, process and chewing process, the large, uh, uh, that means uh, the larger uh, size of the food particle that will broken down to a smaller one. And during this process, continuously, these food particles are being mixed with the slime. So, during the mixing of saliva, saliva also contains several enzymes and uh, you know about the amylase, alpha amylase, that is also known as the tiling. In case of, we have this uh, human have the tiling secretion and uh, that will help in the digestion of the starch. So, in case of poultry, we are talking about the monogastic. So, in case of poultry, poultry should uh, poultry also have the taste buds, and that taste bud, which is located on the back half of the tongue, back half the half of the tongue, and which is uh, very adjacent to the pharynx. So, in coming uh, slides, I will show you the diagram of the digestive system of the poultry where you can see clearly and the salivary amylase activities which also occurs in poultry and the action of the enzymes on a starch which continue to crop region. So poultry also have crop, one of the organ of the digestive system. Like in case of the swine, uh, swine have low activity of the alpha amylase enzymes and uh, like horse, rat, horse, cat and dog, they are lacking of the slivery amylase or alpha amylase. So you should remember that horse, cat and dog, they are lacking of the slivery alpha amylase. Whereas other species like human, which has a strong alpha amylase activity and pH of saliva, which is slightly, slightly alkaline in nature. You know about this. And the alpha amylase, which can be broken down, which acts on the star particularly, and that a starch and glycogen and other related polysaccharides and oligosaccharides, which are a mixture of the 
ग्लूकोज माल्टोज एंड माल्टो ट्राइज बट एमाइलोपैक्टी विच डजेंट अटैक बाई द अल्फा एमाइलेज सो दिस एमाइलोपैक्टी is also referred as the limit dextrin in case of horse which carries enzymatic digestion before microbial fermentation so horse is hind gut fermenter but horse is coming under the ruminant a non ruminant species horse is do horse is consume large quantity of the raw food and they digest it properly but it is that horse is coming under the non ruminant species and hind gut fermenter we can say that and most of the fermentation takes place in the uh, large part of the intestine large intestine in case of the horse specifically specifically colon and sic so horse carries enzymatic digestion before microbial fermentation hence it falls between the ruminant and uh, non ruminant species and they are capable of digesting various kind of the fibrous feed but horse saliva you know horse saliva does not carry the alpha amylase activity or activity and uh, but it contains a uh, bicarbonate more amount of the bicarbonate is being secreted in horse and that bicarbonate acts as buffer so that bicarbonate buffer the digester in proximal region of the stomach which will help in the digestion of the food particle one thing also you should remember that that horse should not have horse not having the gall bladder so they are not storing the bile salt so that the salt which is produced from the liver they are not stored in horse because the horse do not have gall bladder you can see the different uh, figure of the digestive system of first one is swine digestive system second one is uh, chicken or poultry or third one is the horse digestive system so you can compare the size of the digestive system how they are different size you can see in case of poultry there are two cecum in case of swine only one cecum so different species have different size of the digestive system length is different like small intestine large intestine size is also varies in case of horse you can see that the uh, large part of large intestine having very long and very large size of the colon and when we compare with the size of the stomach is also a small in case of horse but the large intestine part is very large so after salivary digestion that digestion has uh, takes place in the mouth then after mouth the food particle comes to the gastrointestinal tract so digestion in gastrointestinal tract further takes place so what happens in uh, gi tract digestion in case of the swine that you should know about that or you have heard about that uh, swine digestive system a stomach swine stomach is divided into three part that is cardia fundus and pylorus so cardia is the entrance part and the pylorus is the terminus so 
in case of the swine the gastric digestion which takes place in the pyloric part or pyloric end of the digestive system in poultry here you can see that the gizzard so gizzard is the organ where churning or mashing of the food takes place or grinding part grinding of the food takes place in the gizzard so gizzard part of poultry they produce qualin k o i l i n qualin which is a protein polysaccharide complex qualin what is that it is a protein polysaccharide complex and which is similar in composition of keratin so that harden that harden in presence of the hcl which is secreted in the digestive tracts so it will more competent to grind or churn the food efficiently due to presence of the qualin so in uh, gi tract digestion after that the food enters into a small intestine and which is mixed with the secretion of duodenum so duodenum is the first part of the small intestine and duodenum liver pancreas other organs which is present and which are associated with this because different type of the secretion coming to the small intestine from those organs and majority of digestion which not even digestion majority of digestion and absorption also which occurs in the small intestine and especially in jejunum part so maximum absorption of the dietary nutrient which takes place in the jejunum part of the small intestine so in this figure you can see that how carbohydrate through feed coming to the gastrointestinal tract different digestive enzymes by the action of different digestive enzymes they are converted into glucose in a small intestine and further they absorption of the glucose takes place in and they goes to blood circulation this is happening in non ruminant so where enzymatic digestion takes place in case of ruminant the microbial fermentation microbial digestion by the action of different microbes because the digestive system is different in ruminant rather non ruminant because the ruminant have four chamber stomach like rumen reticulum rumen is the largest chamber of the stomach rumen then reticulum then omasum and hebomas so rumen is also known as fermentation vat and hebomasum is known as true stomach hebomas of ph is very low and rumen ph is around 6.8 rumen temperature is 39 degrees so you should remember and rumen have so multiple kind of the so many kind of the our diverse we can say that the diverse kind of the microbial population and those microbes which are being responsible for the digestion of different kind of the roughages and whatever feed we are offering to the ruminant so in case of ruminant microbial fermentation first takes place and that microbes release different enzymes and those enzymes which act on food particle and feed particle and they broke down broken down into simpler form and different metabolites are being produced in, during that microbial fermentation and different gases are also being produced during microbial fermentation so 
digestion is totally different in ruminant as in compare with the non ruminant so what will produce in case of non ruminant glucose will produce and in case of non uh, ruminant in case of ruminant volatile fat is fatty acid is produced in rumen some volatile fatty acid directly absorbed by the rumen wall by diffusion process or some other process and some are going to the circulation and they are being absorbed so like that in simple way by this way we can understand that how digestion and absorption of carbohydrate takes place in ruminant and non ruminant so i am talking about the uh, different organs like liver and pancreas and so pancreatic amylase pancreas also release enzymes and pancreatic amylase which is similar and to the in function of salivary amylase that also acts on the glucan part of the food and they are linked of the starch and glycogen and they broke it up so it uh, helps in uh, digestion and absorption of a nutrient from different food particles then large intestine what is the function of large intestine large intestine which plays very important role in what in retrieval of the nutrients so large intestine which play very important part or important role in retrieval of nutrients electrolyte and water so nutrient electrolyte and water के लिए लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन का रोल बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इसके एब्जॉर्बन में इसके एसिमुलेशन में सो यू शुड ऑल्सो रिमेम्बर दैट द ग्लैंड ऑफ द लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन मेनली विच ग्लैंड मेनली म्यूकस ग्लैंड विच इज प्रेजेंट इन लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन सो लार्ज इंटेस्टाइन ग्लैंड डू नॉट प्रोड्यूस एनी इंजाइम्स and the most of the digestion takes place by the microbial activity okay so large intestine which bought about the which bought enzymes which brought enzymes that carries down from the upper part of the intestine that means a small intestine and upper tract and mainly microbial activity takes place in the large intestine part and which helps in the breakdown of the further breakdown of the particles of the food particles and their assimilation and their absorption by the large intestine part so microbial breakdown of the polysaccharide which are mainly volatile fatties which are being used for as a source of the energy so in this uh, diagram i clearly mention that how ruminant digest and absorb the carbohydrate and how non ruminant digest and absorb the carbohydrate in simple way. in case of horse you should remember that in case of horse the microbial digestion takes place in enlarged colon colon size is very big in size in case of horse so microbial digestion takes place in the colon and cecum so when anyone ask then you can say that the colonic ferment colonic fermentation takes place in horse so horse mein colonic fermentation hota colon and uh, this hind gut part of the gi tract accounts 30% of the digestion of protein 
almost 20 to 25 percent of soluble carbohydrate and almost 75 percent of the fibrous feed or uh, you can say that cell one carbohydrate so maximum microbial fermentation takes place in colon and cecum of horse You can go through this table. I will provide the slides or PPT. So you can go through this table. There are different common enzymes and their sources and substrate also. So which substrates these enzymes act. You will go through this and this table is available in the books also. So you can check in book as well. Different enzymes like uh, beta 1,4, 1,4 uh, alpha D glucans, uh, also known as the alpha amylase, alpha glucosidase, oligo 1,6 glucosidase, also known as also maltase, lactase enzyme, which is responsible for or which uh, is responsible for breakdown of the lactose, fructonosidase. That is a sucrase, known as sucrase, which is associated with the sucrose. So these are different enzymes. Hello. Namaskar, sir. So class le rahe hain, sir. Abhi EOG ka class le rahe hain. Jee. जी ठीक है सो यू कैन विजिट दिस टेबल एंड दिस टेबल इज आल्सो अवेलेबल इन द बुक सो हाउ एब्जॉर्प्शन ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट टेक्स प्लेस इन मोनोगैस्ट्रिक एनिमल यू आर वेल एवर वेल एवर अबाउट दैट आफ्टर दिस डिस्कशन सो फर्स्ट व्हाट हैपेंस absorption of dietary nutrients by different monogastric animals or non ruminants takes place in a small intestine this line you can just remember it and a small amount of disaccharide which are being absorbed or which may be absorbed from the gut wall of the lumen and the bulk of the dietary carbohydrate which is absorbed as monosaccharide monosaccharide disaccharide polysaccharide aap logo pata hi hai so monosaccharide form mein maximum absorption hota hai carbohydrate ka and the absorption of nutrients from lumen of intestine which can takes place by पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट एक्सटिव ट्रांसपोर्ट पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट आप लोग को मालूम ही है सिंपल डिफ्यूजन क्या है वट इज एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट वट इज पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट सो दीज आर एसोसिएटेड इन एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ डिफरेंट न्यूट्रिय इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द टाइप्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिएंट विच काइंड ऑफ द न्यूट्रिएंट विच आर बींग एब्जॉर्ड बाय द सिस्टम सो दीज आर वेरी बेसिक थिंग्स i'm trying to just remind you that you have already studied in biochemistry how this absorption and digestion and physiology also you learned about that so just remember it in last year classes so what will happens and uh, in case of ruminant i am coming to ruminant ruminant uh, i have already discussed ruminant had four chamber stomach and different digestion and absorption different kind of digestion and absorption nutrients takes place in ruminant when compare with the non ruminant because digestive system is totally different in ruminant so what happens ruminant is herbivore you are well aware about that and uh, ruminant stomach is divided into four compartment 
Roman reticulum omysum and evomysum. Evomysum is true stomach. And rumen is also known as fermentation, where most of the fermentation of the different feed items takes place by the action of different kind of the microbes. So you should remember that and uh, that ruminant animal which produced large volume of saliva during rumination process. Cut chewing animal, ruminant is cut chewing animal and uh, ruminant animal have are producing large volume of saliva. How much saliva they are producing? In case of cattle, they are producing 150 liter per day. You should remember this value. 150 liter per day saliva. In cattle, in case of sheep, they are producing sheep and goat. They are producing 10 liter per day. Sheep and goat is a small ruminant. And grazing cattle, they spend about eight hours per day in rumination. That means they spend eight hours per day in cut chewing itself. And they have diverse kind of the bacteria protozoa and fungi and rumen pH you know, rumen temperature you know 39 degrees centigrade, rumen pH is 6.8 and uh, <coughs> bacterial population you know 10 to the power 9 to 10 to the power 10 per ml of rumen content, protozoal population 10 to the power 6 per ml and fungi population is 10 to the power 4 per ml of the rumen content. And molar proportion so here in this uh, diagram you can see that this how cellulose that means polysaccharide cellulose and starch are broken down and Finally, the intermediate product is pyruvate. So, cellulose is converted to cellobios, glucose 1 phosphate by the action of different enzymes, or which are being responsible for that. Then, finally, they produce pyruvate. So, this is the metabolism process of polysaccharides. Like a starch, they are Converted to maltose, isomaltose, then glucose, then glucose 6 phosphate, fructose 6 phosphate, fructose 1 6 phosphate or diphosphate, and then pyruvate like pectin, hemicellulose, pentosense, sucrose, fructose. Finally, they are converted to pyruvate. And different kind of the gases are being also produced during that process. So finally, after these inter intermediate product pyruvate, they are converted to, these pyruvate are finally converted to formate. Formate is further converted to methane, CO2 and hydrogen. Then both CO2 and hydrogen combine to methane. Then uh, acetate, butyrate, propionate. So these three, uh, different metabolites is being produced and that acetate, butyrate and propionate used as a source of energy by the ruminant. So one thing I will tell you that molar proportion of three major volatile fatty acids like acetate, butyrate and propionate. What is the major molar, molar proportion that is Subsejada acetate produce that is 65 percent, propionate 21 percent, and butyrate 14 percent. So, total 100 percent, when 60 percent acetate, a case percent propionate, and butyrate 14 percent. So, these are the molar proportion that means 65 is to 21 is to 14. And the rate of gas production in rumen is very much fluctuating. But there are, there are 
the gas is being produced just after consuming the food so one cow one cow they are producing 30 liter per hour you think how much gas is being produced in 24 hours so one cow full fed cow pura usko khana de diya us samay ek gai jo hai 30 liter per hour gas produce karti hai gas mein mixture of gases hote hain so composition of rumen gas which is of 40% carbon dioxide 30 to 40% methane high percent hydrogen and very a small proportion of oxygen and nitrogen so you know that rumen is rumen microbes is strictly anaerobic but some amount of the oxygen and nitrogen coming from the environment during feeding process so these are also produced in the rumen so some facultative microbes are also present in the rumen they consume the oxygen coming from the atmosphere and during production of methane 4.5 g of methane is being produced for every 100 g of carbohydrate digestion you should remember this value 4.5 g of methane produced every 100 g for 100 g carbohydrate 4.5 g methane produce hota so this is the wastage of the energy methane production is the wastage of the energy but during metabolism methane is or methane are being produced so we cannot 100% read uh, cartel this value so we can reduce by the dietary interventions or dietary manipulations and we can loss or animal can loss 7% of 7 to 11% in range because it depends on the diet type of the diet so 7 to 11% of the gross feed energy are being lost by the animal by methane production so we can say once we can reduce the methane production by dietary alteration we can also save the energy losses in the environment and those energy are being utilized for the production purpose so there are different ways of the different how the metabolism of the carbohydrate takes place in ruminant so it are it is being used as the instant source of energy precursor of liver and muscle glycogen glycogen you know the animal starch jisko bolte hain or which also assist as a precursor of the tissue triglycerides so these uh, <coughs> figures these figures are available in book you can refer this figure is available in mcdonald so you can refer this book even in dv ready also the metabolism pathway you can see that so you can refer the books also how the glycolytic pathway you also just remember you already uh, studied in biochemistry classes that how what is happening in the glycolytic pathway that means how glucose is converted as a source of energy and uh, tca cycle you will ever aware about that what is happening in the tca cycle and where it happens so glycolysis first is the glucose as a source of energy how this glucose is utilized as a source of energy so glycolysis which takes place in where takes place this takes place in the cytoplasm and further it forms finally it forms pyruvate there are different stages of production of the pyruvate so finally it forms pyruvate and that pyruvate 
which can enter into the mitochondria and thereafter in mitochondria the acetyl coa is, is being produced during the tca cycles and uh, the generation of high energy bond generation of high energy bond 